least we've got bread now. And blankets. And the same tomorrow's trucks might have rice. We must decide what we're going to do. Please, Mum, not this again. Listen. Our lives back home are finished, at least for now. This is war, and this is the way it always is. We can't settle in this country. If we learn the language, learn their way of doing things... Stop being who I am. I don't want to change. We trust in our God. That's how we'll remain ourselves. It's been happening for centuries. Remember the story I used to tell you about Daniel? Maybe. What about it? The Babylonian Empire captured their city, Jerusalem, remember? Their temple was burnt, their holy objects stolen, their families murdered. Oh, oh. Daniel's people were marched out of their homes. One day, everything was normal, like we used to be. The next, there were slaves, refugees. They found themselves in Babylon, the greatest city the world had ever known. Just another captive tribe in a city fueled by captives. But for the Israelite leaders, the Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar had special work in mind. Your Majesty, the Israelite princes. They tell me you are the finest men to be found amongst your people. I am going to have you trained up. You shall work for me as Magi. You will advise me, govern the provinces, foretell the future, interpret sacrifices to the gods. Hey, Lord Magus. Your Majesty, we cannot serve your gods. If your rituals demand that we Daniel. perform... Daniel. We usually allow three years to train a Magus. If you are not adequate by then... How can we work alongside these gods? Look, Daniel. Look out there. Look at our people. We must accept this, use it to do what we can for them. I can learn the skills of a Magus. But if they ask me to deny the Lord God, to break his laws, I cannot. Belshazzar, my son, take them to their quarters. Make sure they're comfortable. This way, Israelites. The months passed, and the Israelites learned their new skills. And with skill, they earned protection for their people and the friendship of the Prince Royal, Belshazzar. And this one God, he does everything. He protects us. One God is all a man needs. And he never loses his temper with you. If we obey his laws, he is our fortress. Does he reveal the future for you? If that's what's required, but it's not important. As long as he is obeyed, the future will be safe. My lords, my lords, the king has spoken. An honor, such an honor. You must have truly impressed his majesty. Yes, Ashpenaz? You are to share the meat from the king's table. It comes straight from the temple of Marduk. Only the most honored share the king's meat. It's been part of a sacrifice. That's why it's so holy. We cannot accept it. What? We cannot eat meat offered to another god. Tainted by his ritual. No reasonable god would ask you to refuse this honor. Daniel, if we refuse, we will suffer. And everything we've gained for our people will be lost. We cannot eat the meat. We must stand together. There's no other food for me to give you. And when you get sick, I will be punished. You will not tell the king. I can't do it. Allow us time to show you. We will be none the worse for it. Ashpenaz did what he could. The Israelites had to survive on water and little else. Daniel and the others prayed that their obedience to the laws of the Lord God would not go unrewarded, and that the king would not realize the sacred meat had gone untouched. I want to see how your studies are coming along. I hear good things, don't I, Lord Magus? You're looking very well, I must say. The temple meat obviously suits you. And your work, show me. Astrological charts, Your Majesty. 
Most impressive. Most impressive. Wouldn't you say? Adequate. What about those treasury figures? The calculations, Majesty? Very good. Very good. I can't see any point in training you anymore. Your Majesty, there is surely still... I appoint you all full King's Magi. Get them their proper robes, Ashpenaz. They'll be teaching you soon, Lord Magus. Don't think you can get the better of me. Daniel knew that the Chief Magus would always be an enemy. But he had no choice other than to go on working and learning if his people were to be safe. He learned to administer their empire, and he learned to interpret their dreams. <gasps> Magus! Magus! Call my Magus! Majesty! Terrible dream. I have had it the last three nights. Tell me what it means. Of course, Your Majesty. Relate your dream and I shall interpret. First, you must tell me the dream. Majesty? How do I know you really have these powers? Any of you? Come on! Majesty, no mortal can know another's dream. None of Are us... Are you will... denying me? But, Majesty... Do not refuse me! Gods, have all the Magi executed immediately! Throughout the palace, every Magus was arrested, including the Israelites. In their cell, they prayed. And just before dawn, the hour set for the executions. Your Majesty... One of the Magi insists he knows your dream. The Israelite Magus. Let's hear it, then. You watched. You saw a huge tree, tall, still growing, strong, vibrant, topmost branches touching the clouds. It fed everyone, more than enough for everyone. And it shaded and sheltered the animals gave a home to the birds, and this tree, Your Majesty, is you, providing for all the people of the earth. Then, a watcher, a holy watcher, came down from heaven, and he cried, chop it down. The animals must run, the birds fly. You have risen too high, Your Majesty, and the Lord God must bring you down. But the watcher also said, leave the stump in the ground, bind him with iron rings, he can live in the rain with the beasts of the fields. No longer human, he will have the mind of a beast for seven years. Your Majesty will live like an animal in a field. But there is hope. The Watcher allowed the stump to live, did not uproot it. And when you come to acknowledge the only Lord God after those seven years, you will be restored to humanity. Shall I cut him down now, Your Majesty? <laughs> I have never heard anything quite so preposterous. I knew you were different, Israeline. You are very special. <laughs> <laughs> Who could possibly have such an absurd dream? No. The dream was exactly as he said. And for that reason, you shall all be saved. But the interpretation... Ah, too ridiculous for words, really. Look at his majesty. Has he turned into an animal? Has he grown horns? It is not known when this might happen. I think I'd like to get some sleep now. A year passed. The king remained unchanged, but Daniel said nothing. He knew the word of the Lord God was true, and the dream would be fulfilled one day. The stump was your enemies, Your Majesty. 
you will bind them with iron, send them out into the fields to live like animals. Israelite? <laughs> Aren't I supposed to be a donkey now? Or was it a giraffe? Hmm? Or a crocodile? <laughs> I am only a voice for the Lord God. Look, Israelite, look at my city. Why should I become an animal? Look at the gardens, the temples, the buildings, the marketplaces, the courts. I built this city. I built Babylon. As did a million captive slaves, including my people. No, Israelite, I built it. Only I built Babylon. The greatest city the world has seen. And it's my city. Built by my hands. Uh, what's happening to me? Uh, I am looking. Out of the way. What's happening? I am King Neb. Your Majesty. Your Majesty, be calm. Remember, with faith you can come to the Lord God and be restored. The Israelite seems to think his God might help your father to recover, to be king again. Your God has nothing to offer us, Israelite. We were once friends. Be grateful to keep your life. Your Majesty. What happened? Even when Nebuchadnezzar was restored, Belshazzar remained on the throne in Babylon. Not that he learned the lesson of his father's pride. He had been born to rule, but now he had the power. He ignored the empire. The chief Magus was the only man he listened to. Marduk, the only god he wanted to worship. And every night in the palace, another feast. Alone in his rooms, Daniel prayed for guidance. Ignored by the king, how could he help his people now? We must struggle to bring about God's kingdom. We cannot surrender to despair. Oh, proud men. It's the Israelites, everyone, look. It's the man with the special god. <laughs> Ashpenaz! Ashpenaz, why don't you get those cups my father brought back from Jerusalem? Your Majesty, they are holy, sacred. Did you hear me? We've been waiting for you, Israelite. Lord God is waiting for you also. <laughs> then we'll drink him a toast out of one of your own cups. Come on, drink with me. Well, if you won't, I'm sure the Lord Marduk will. Give everyone else a drink, Ashpenaz. Lord Marduk, I pledge to you. More, everyone! Explain, quick. Uh, read it, and, and you'll have riches beyond man's dreams. G gold, silver, frankincense, armies of slaves, anything, yes? I, well, it looks like... But you'll be my chief minister, viceroy, my... Would your majesty like to hear the interpretation? You, you, you can read it? Everything I've offered. Keep your gifts. Reward someone else. Even your father, proud as he was, came to understanding in the end, but not you. Mene, Mene. The Lord God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Ufasin, your kingdom has been divided amongst the Medes and Persians. How dare he? How dare this 
foreigner insult the king of Babylon in this way? This is our king. And who are you? An Israelite, a hostage. Don't listen to him, your majesty. It's nonsense. Your majesty, your majesty, look. Your majesty, your majesty. The Medes are inside the city walls. What should we do? Your majesty. My sword, my shield. We will fight. Darius, king of the Medes, killed Belshazzar and captured his city. He made it the focus of his new empire, so all those who had been Belshazzar's captives now belonged to Darius. But Daniel's true enemy remained as powerful as ever, still determined to bring him down. If Daniel was to protect his people, he had to find a way to work with this new king. And you, Chaldean, what skills can you offer my court? Interpretation of dreams, Highness, and divination of sacrifices. For instance, Great Marduk tells me that this is a very auspicious day for you. I foresee... And you, Israelite, I'm told you worship none of the local gods. No, Highness, they are just statues. And yet you alone foretold the downfall of my predecessor. I worship the Lord God. He guides me. Marduk is the only living God, Highness. This man's counsel is valueless. I need a new city governor. Chaldeum, you will serve me. Israelite, you will be governor. I admire your people, Daniel. And why keep us all hostage, Highness? Why keep us here? <laughs> Daniel, if I freed the Israelites, this whole empire would collapse. Let one tribe go free, it's the end. And yet, you allow us to worship the one true God who will one day destroy all earthly empires. Worship what you want. I don't care. It's order I want. At least every morning, Daniel was able to face Jerusalem and pray to the Lord God. But his enemies, unable to fault his work, plotted to use his faith to destroy him. Highness, the sacrifices have spoken. What must I do? Holy Marduk has made his wishes plain. For the next 30 days, no citizen must petition any man or god except you. Me? No one but the king should receive petitions. It must be decreed. Really? Anyone breaking this decree must be thrown into the lion pit. Your Highness, this would be foolish. Foolish in the extreme. Really? Such a decree will only... Who is king, Highness? Yourself or the Israelite? Let this be the law of the Medes and the Persians. For 30 days, make no prayer to any other god except his Highness. Daniel was forced to make a choice. Should he obey the king or his god? No decree signed by the king may ever be revoked. That is the law of the Medes and the Persians. Arrest him. You can still tell me you are not praying. Worship who you want. I was misled, so was I. I misjudged you completely. Your God will protect you. He will. He will. I will pray for you.
Yes. We shall return in the morning. My Lord God, prepare me now. Everlasting, living God, whose kingly power is never weakened, whose sovereignty shall have no end. Be with me now. We return in the morning, Highness. All that night, Darius fasted and prayed to Daniel's God. In the morning, in despair, he returned to the pit. Highness? Daniel? I think possibly the lions may be a little hungry. Are you hurt? The Lord God sent an angel to still the lions. Help him up! Help him up! I did you no injury, Your Highness. The lions did me no injury. Arrest him! All those men! Tomorrow they can feed the lions. <laughs> Highness! I can explain! Let me explain! Highness, you must not. You were falsely accused. It is the law of the Medes and the Persians. Then we must pray to the Lord God, whose justice is higher than any law. O oh Lord God, we pray for mercy and forgiveness for all, and deliverance for all people everywhere. Daniel continued to work for the empire that had destroyed his country, but he helped his people, and years later they were freed. They returned unchanged to their homeland. We can't live out our whole lives here, camped in a field, hoping, waiting. If we have faith, our God will lead us home. <laughs> <laughs>